Hey everybody, it is around noon on Saturday, I think it's uh, March 21st. Uh, we are obviously still in the middle of all this craziness and um, with the COVID-19 issues. Um, wasn't my plan to keep dropping videos and do different things, um, but uh, this morning when I was on the property, uh, I was driving around I come to one of the ends of the, the rows out there and I felt the Lord say, um, the world is, at a, is, is in a crossroad. Is at a crossroad? So like the world is at a crossroad. And uh, whenever I hear something like that, it, it's very seldom that everything will get downloaded uh, right then and there. Uh, but this morning I saw that in Pennsylvania here, Governor Wolf had backed off on uh, basically going around and checking on businesses that were closed down. I see there are some uh, politicians and some other people uh, who are saying that it'll ruin the economy if we shut down these businesses for two weeks. And um, and then, you know, I, I, there's just, just a bunch of stuff. I saw that this morning. Then he said about being at the crossroads. And then after I got done working, I had to run to Giant to uh, look for some more wipes here for work and uh, pick a couple things up. And man, that place was packed. And I mean, like no social distancing, uh, no nothing. And uh, so I just, you know, throughout this morning and uh, that I've just been in some prayer. Okay, like, so Lord, like crossroads, like uh, give me something biblical out of this. I mean, we know where we're at. I, I dropped a, a video um, yesterday or a podcast or whatever. I think yeah, it was a podcast actually about uh, we cannot go back to business as usual. We have to change the way we do church. We have to go back to the biblical ways, get away from these hundreds of years of tradition and, um, and because tradition's not working, obviously, and because um, most communities haven't changed since we've stopped meeting for church uh, morally. But uh, so I said, Lord, you know, what, what are you trying to say? Uh, give me something biblical and do you want me to share it? So uh, the first thing that came to my mind was a scripture in Mark 8, real basic. It's after Peter makes a confession that Jesus was the Christ. He asked him who he said he was. But he said something. It's just one sentence, one scripture I want to share. And um, it just says, For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Well, actually, I'll back up. I always say I'm going to share one, but let me go a couple verses prior because I don't like to, um, you know, checks mix scripture. Forever, this is uh, Mark 8, Mark chapter 8, verse uh, 34 through 38. It says, And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to him, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And then he goes on, I'll just finish that chapter. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his faith with the holy angels. Now in that scripture, you know, it's real basic. He says, first of all, if anyone wants to be a disciple, and there's no such thing as being saved and not being a disciple. Uh, that's a that's a lie. That's a bunch of crap that the church has been teaching. Just say a prayer. You're good to go. Others are disciples. I don't see that anywhere in here. Um, if anyone wishes to come after me, because we're supposed to follow him, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. So, you know, we want to deny uh, things that we're uh, that our flesh wants, the things that we want, take up our cross, which could very well be sitting in the house uh, for a while and uh, seeking him and suffering through not having what we we're, we used to have, uh, we're used to having, and then following him. So I'm just trying to break this scripture down. But my point was this, as a parable in the world, right now in the United States, uh, which was formed... Um, on the basis of rebellion, uh, not really religious freedom. Most people will argue with me, but we rebelled from uh, from the English rule, and uh, whether it was for religion or not. And many people, many biblical scholars who are much smarter than me uh, also agree. And we see that in the United States. Uh, you need to stay home. You're not telling me what to do. You know, you guys need to work. No, I don't want to work. Okay, you can't work. I want to work. You know, we are constantly in rebellion. 
You have a wiener. You're a man. No, I'm a woman. Whatever, dude. America is now paying the price for the rebellion. And here we are, um, told to stay home, don't want to stay home, uh, told to, to take off work. And there are plans. People are being paid to stay home from work. Um, but they're saying it's wrecking the economy. So we're choosing, some people are choosing money over actual life, um, which is a very dangerous thing. What would it profit a man to gain an extra week's pay but to die of uh, COVID-19? Or to give it to your kids or your family. Craziness, craziness. And uh, so we're also at a crossroad in another one. I go a couple chapters, flip to the right. Uh, well, flip the pages to the left, but go to the right. Chapter 10, the rich young ruler. Rich young ruler comes up to Jesus uh, knowing what's going on. He thinks he does. Tries to flatter Jesus. It says he was sitting, this is Jesus. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Eternal life, sorry. And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. And then Jesus says, uh, You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your mother and father. And he said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these from my youth up. Looking at him, Jesus felt a love for him and said to him, One thing you lack, go and sell all you possess and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But at these words, he, the rich young ruler, was saddened and went away grieving, for he was one who owned much property. And Jesus, looking around, said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So they were even more astonished at him and said, Then who can be saved? Looking at them, Jesus said, With people it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. You know, I think of that. Uh, so we complained, you know, the government's not doing enough. What could we do to be saved from this virus? Uh, stay at home and we'll shut businesses down. And we turn around grieved and we go back to our businesses. It's crazy. Listen, guys, uh, it's not a fearful thing. I could care less, dude. You want to go out there and get all sick? I'll do your funeral for you. I'm out there. I'm stuck. Shana and I and our Chuck, the employee here, we're working. Um, stuck like Chuck, bro. Um, trying to exercise, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it. We're being very careful. We're trying to stay away. We're wiping stuff down. Um, you know, not kissing any poodles or anything. If we sneeze or cough, we blame it on someone else. Just kidding. You know, I want to throw a little humor here. But guys, listen, seriously. Uh, rebelling against... Orders and stuff is definitely not a way to get free from this or to protect anyone or even to honor God. Um, if you want to do this on your own, that's cool. But we're at a crossroads right now in the United States. We can pick health and get this thing done with, or we can battle out over nickels and dimes and, um, and then just watch more people die and more people get sick. But... Um, so that was the crossroads, and uh, there's crossroads in the church. Uh, if you didn't check it out, please go and uh, watch or listen to my podcast I did yesterday, uh, Business as Usual, dot, 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 no more. Uh, the Lord was speaking to me, when this is over, we cannot go back to doing church as just the way we did it. Can't do it, guys. And uh, I, I think back to some of my friends on Facebook and some other things I heard. People used to preach, uh, preach sermons. I've heard sermons preached. I've heard it said. I've saw posts uh, that, you know, it is a sin to watch, to have, sit at home on Sundays and watch your church. It's a sin. You got to get out there in the buildings. I've heard it. If you're one of them, you can repent anytime. And now everyone's doing that. So it's not a sin unless God's forced us into sin. Guys, things are changing. And uh, we need to seek the Lord and say, okay, God, what, what are you doing that's new? And uh, so this, this whole message is we're at a crossroads. Please, guys, please uh, exercise common sense. Exercise uh, good, uh, what do you call it, social distancing. Wash your hands, guys. Stay stay away. It's not worth it. And um, I guarantee you if our business calls tomorrow, 
and says, if you, uh, you guys got to close. I'm on it, bro. I am on it. They said they'll pay us. I would be glad to sit up here and snuggle with my beautiful wife and get paid for it. Uh, you won't see me fighting about it, but some of you got more to lose. I get it than I do. So, uh, but ministry, probably a couple thousand dollars worth of ministry over the next six months. Maybe, I don't know. Some people pay us, some people don't. I don't do it for the money, but you know, I got stuff that's, uh, it's postponed too. So we're all in the same boat. It's not like we're being singled out. Do the right thing, guys. If you're a believer, go be the hands and feet of, of Christ and um, let's get it done. All right, guys, you're at the crossroad. Make the right decision. I'll see you on the other side.